Hi, my name is Jeff Hillen. I work for Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and this is the next session in our Redfish YouTube channel. This goes over the Redfish model common properties that you will find in resources. Uh, again, real quick, going over the resource map, um, the common collections and instances you will see, um, not so much the collections, although there are some common properties in those as well. In fact, all of our collections are pretty much the same with a few changes. Uh, and instead, you'll see a lot of the instances like systems, chassis, managers, sessions, and the rest all have a common set of properties. And here is not an exhaustive list, but certainly ones you'll see. The first thing you'll notice is at odata.type. This specifies the schema and the version of that schema that defines this individual resource. It's of the format schema.version dot entity where the version has underscores separating the version so you'll see v number underscore number underscore number and then the entity that follows it and for redfish we try and keep the schema name and the entity name the same just for ease and so that should help you track down uh, the schema definition either in JSON or CSDL and I'll go over what that looks like in a second in fact I'll show you all of these in just a second ID is a common property for members of a collection. It's a unique ID within the current URI. It's usually the last segment of a collection. So um, sometimes in our examples, you'll see like system one, system two. Because it's a hypermedia API, remember ID could be unique. One implementer might keep that as serial numbers. So don't get fixed on system one. It may be system AB5749 or who knows. Name is meant as a human-friendly resource for the name. Again, it's not really meant to be a key. It's more meant for the implementer to try and pass on some human context, uh, meaningful information about this system. You'll also see a type thing in there, and this is meant to be a, a human context for the type of system this is. So in system, you'll see system type. In manager, you'll see manager type. In chassis, you'll see chassis type. So we use that XXXX type you know, whatever type to try and provide, you know, is this a pizza box server? Is this a blade? Is this a, a rack? Is this a, you know, what kind of a thing am I dealing with? We don't have a lot of normative context around that. Instead, it's really meant for humans and it's provided by the implementer. Status, on the other hand, is a very um, controlled object that you find in almost every resource. And it has three properties within it, state, health, and health roll-up. Health and health roll-up, we try to follow the green, yellow, red model. So um, there's only three values for each of those, and so it's meant to, to show you if the system is healthy, if it's mediocre, or if it's truly you know, in, in error. State has everything from enabled to present or absence indicators. So it's an enumeration as well, but it's leveraged in all of the properties. And because of that, not all of the enumerations are available in all of the resources. So um, keep that in mind. Links, there are two types of links in uh, Redfish. There are a kind that are related directly off of the root level of the resource. And there are those that are in the link section. We've done that so for implementations that support query, um, you can expand. We did most of this around expand. There's an option called expand, and it's not mentioned in the spec anywhere, but it is supported by OData, and implementations we expect will support it in the future. So in order to future-proof our architecture, we've had two kinds of links. Those that are in the root, and they're meant to be expanded when you do an expand off a resource. And there are those in the link section, which show things that are related to. So we call the links in the root section dependent, the one, one in the link section we call um, related, and the ones in the root we call dependent. So um, links are like computer systems that are associated with chassis and managers. You'll see those links are in the link section, whereas a computer system that has Ethernet controllers or sto local storage or processors or memory, those kind of um, references are contained in the root of the resource. You'll see in actions for those instances that support actions. And actions, again, are done with a post operation. And things that don't work very well with a, with a patch or a, or a put, um, we've decided to do with actions. Things like resetting a server, which can be on a complex operation, or other items. Um, and those are resource dependent. So look for an action item inside of each resource. You'll also see an OEM object. Now, you won't necessarily find it in every object, but it's certainly there in the schema. And what that is used is to separate vendor extensions from the standard itself. One of the problems with, with some 
extension mechanisms is they'll either create another resource or um, they allow vendors to just put whatever they want within their resource. And that can confuse things when it comes to interoperability. Gee, why doesn't Vendor X support this? Well, what we've done in Redfish is clearly delineate the OEM space. It's OEM colon object um, and then vendor property object. So I'll show you what those look like in a second. You'll also see an at odata.id. That's the URI, URI of the resource itself. It's a self pointer, so you don't have to necessarily keep uh, track of that, particularly uh, things like curl. If you, if you, it's hard to keep context outside of the script. It's real easy to do it with odata ID. And then odata context, you'll see that that's just for generic odata clients. If you're not a generic odata client, um, you can ignore it. So don't really worry about the format for that if, if you're not a generic odata client. You'll also see in the mockups at redfish.copyright. This is not meant to show up in an implementation. It's actually just our way of doing a copyright statement on the objects that we're producing because we, we zip these uh, resources up um, in, in, in our mockups up and they're available in other mechanisms besides the resource explorer. And so in order to put a copyright statement in each one and still make it uh, comply with the schema and, and be readable, that's just in there for, for uh, copyright protection. It's not meant to show what an actual resource would show. You'll notice there's at odata and at uh, redfish. And those are called annotations. Any property that begins with an ampersand is an annotation. And this is OData's mechanism for inserting additional information, either directly data or metadata. So, you know, OData.type, that's clearly meaningful data. Um, and in another example of this is at redfish.settings. In fact, if you look at the at redfish, if you look at the redfish CSDL or JSON schema object, you'll see there's a lot of different um, potential annotations that could be included. One of those that's really has a good impact on semantics is at redfish.settings. Anytime you see that in a resource, that tells you as a client, hey, this resource isn't writable. Yeah, the schema may say it's writable, but actually I got to look at another object, and that's called a settings object, and that setting that uh, reference is contained inside this settings object, and that's the one you do to put patch or or um, update to and not this object directly. And the reasons that's there is that's think of a system that needs to be rebooted. Well, I can't really apply the settings right now because they won't take place until my next reboot. And so commonly you'll see an at fish, redfish.settings object that says, oh, these are the settings that are going to take place the next time something happens like a reboot. So there are other annotations as well. Uh, make sure you go ahead and take a look at them um, inside the redfish object. I'm not gonna go over them so here's some examples of how you see the property inside of a resource. I've already navigated fairly deep into the Redfish mockup. I'm in uh, the Manager's uh, collection, BMC. It's got NICs, which are a collection, and this is a NIC called Dedicated. You'll see right away, here's at odata.type. Again, that's an annotation of pound schema name Ethernet interface, version 102, and you'd look for the Ethernet interface entity inside of that resource, and um, that would tell you everything you need to know about the schema definitions. The ID for this one is dedicated, and you'll see that's also the very end of the URI. The human-friendly name provided by the implementer mentor for this resource is uh, Manager Ethernet Interface with a description that's the same thing. Status, you can see it doesn't have a uh, health roll-up because this is too far down in the, cha in the uh, resource chain, but it does have state of enabled and health of OK. Um, scrolling down um, quite a bit, you'll see this particular resource has an at redfish.settings, and you can see that it's got its own OData type. Um, you'll see that in OEM as well. When an OEM defines a section, they'll have a schema definition going along with it. So anytime there's an insertion that needs a schema definition, you'll, you'll find that. Um, so the client can tell what data is in this um, object and how to um, parse it. So there's a settings object that says, um, hey, go look in uh, Manager's BMC Nix dedicated SD. Again, I would never parse that. It's a hypermedia API. I would just jump to it, and that tells me, oh, in order to set this NIC, I have to go there to change any of the MAC addresses, IP addresses, or anything like that. You'll also see time and e-tag that tells you the time the last apply was done, the e-tag of the resource, and any messages, just like on a um, uh, how we do error info for extended message handling. 
um, you would get that same messages construct back from the last time the setting was applied because there's no other way to get it. It won't spawn a task and it won't come back in a real resource. So you still need that information. That's included in the settings object. Um, there's also OEM. There's no OEM data here right now. And then you'll see the uh, OData ID, which is a self pointer. The OData context, which don't worry about that if you're not a um, a uh, generic OData client. And then here's the Redfish copyright notice. Um, again, ignore that. That's just here for uh, SPMF's uh, legal needs. So that's it for the um, common properties. Thank you for watching and stay tuned to the Redfish channel for more information on deep dives into each of the individual data models.